writing the Doors of Eden at the time, um, which was definitely one of these books, you know, I'm writing it as a standalone, it's got to have a complete plot arc, it doesn't need, you know, and without too many dangling threads. Um, and the, in a peculiar way, The Doors of Eden is a very dishonest book because it is kind of my excuse to write all of these weird alternative evolution scenarios, which turn up as these little sort of um, separate bits interspersed through the book, because that was so much fun. Just doing, yeah, what, what, what if, what if, what if trilobites were the dominant species um, in the present day and they were enormous and immortal and also went into space for some reason? Um, what if saber toothed tigers? Um, you know, what, what, what if, what if um, sort of, a carboniferous strain of amphibian develops to become the, the the dominant race and then then does something terrible to their own planet and just like that writing all of those little evolutionary histories that the book is kind of strung between and then about a third of the way into the book they start to intrude into the main human plot as these things are kind of bleeding into our our timeline and that that was just that was a lot of fun that was an awful awful, awful lot of fun to do and i think then taking all of this 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 utter sort of pseudo-scientific nonsense that I put together and actually then hopefully bringing it to a point in the plot where you realize, oh, that's what's going on, and that suddenly everything that I've seen at this point now makes sense in this context. Um, that was kind of the challenge I'd set for myself, um, which hopefully it, hopefully it works. I mean, I don't... Um, it's, it's a very old book. It was a very old book to write, but it was... It was fun, and I, I I genuinely think that if I felt that the 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 demand was there for a sequel, I probably would go back to it at some point. Alien Clay is the initial idea was I wanted to write a book about a as an exoplanet sort of alien ecosystem that had not arisen through our traditional sort of Darwinian competition idea. So in on the world of Kiln, everything is the product of sort of multiple symbioses so that any individual thing you see is a number of other creatures just legoed together so you've got the one that does the legs is the good good running creature and then you've got another thing that's good at eating things or another thing with keen senses and they all just chunk together and make an animal and then maybe you find the same bit in another in another animal so that leg one might be doing the legs for a variety of different species because it's very good at legs um and that's what's going on on the planet but also on the planet, there are these ruins that show that there was appeared to be some sort of civilization at some point, except the world is so madly chaotic that the humans who, who arrived there just can't work out how that could be. Um, the humans who are sent there are basically um, political dissidents sent to an extrasolar penal colony um, because the human culture is phenomenally dictatorial and very very intellectually narrow to the extent that they've basically got a view of the universe and basically the idea of uh, the universe has a purpose and the purpose is us the idea that they they themselves and humanity in general is the point of the universe and then they come across this world of kiln which is an absolute slap in the face of this ideology and they insist that the scientists they send out there make that work make that fit into their universal viewpoint um, so that they, they can find, yes, obviously there was a civilization and the civilization was weirdly human-like despite the fact that patently nothing human is coming out of the planet. And so it is this study of this weird ecosystem, but it's also the study of this weird sort of artificial um, authoritarian human society and these two utterly antithetical worlds colliding on the planet through the uh, through the viewpoint of a, a zeno ecologist so service model is 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 quite different to a lot of things i've written um to start with it it's it is as good, the closest i'm ever going to get to douglas adams in that kind of comedy mode uh it's also incredibly bleak because i tend to go funny when i go bleak um service model is about charles charles is a robot valet who um, would absolutely not consider himself to be a sort of sapient thinking creature. He is just a robot. He's following directives. Um, he appears to have murdered his master. He doesn't know why, but this sort of gets him kicked out of the manor he's, um, he's the property of and starts a journey through this 
utterly trashed and post-apocalyptic world where everything has fallen apart and which is full of robots desperately trying to be the things that they were programmed to be in a world which no longer needs any of them because you know and charles wants to be someone's valet um slight smart, slight murder problem aside nobody's looking for a valet when it's basically mad max territory out there i mean one of the one of my, my tagline for though it's kind of it's mad max starring c-3po <laughs> Um, and so it is this exploration of um, it's it's the first time I've really had a protagonist robot and to really explore well, what if you have a robot as a main character, but also a robot that doesn't in any way think it's a, it is actually a thinking creature and, and resist this idea quite strenuously throughout the book. Um, and yet obviously and, and is just trying to fulfill this weird sort of chain of priorities it's, it's, it, it has. And how does that differ from a regular character in a book? Especially writing science fiction, the novella is the absolute perfect length to really explore one idea. So no B-plots, uh, no side quests, nothing else. You can get through the implications of one particular science fiction idea in 40,000 words very nicely. Um, and that... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've become extremely... I'm very glad the novella has kind of come back as a form. Um, through yeah, publishers like um, React or Tor.com, um, as was, and through Solaris in the UK, um, that this is a, uh, I have these outlets where I can write a book of that kind of length and just really get to grips with a particular idea or a particular character and then have it done in 40,000 words and it's still a perfectly satisfactory story. I mean, Elder Ace was a bit of a surprise hit. I don't think anyone was uh, expecting it to do as well as it did, but it it's one of the things that kind of put me on the radar for a lot of US readers. Um, it's a it's a book into it's kind of in two halves. Uh, it is a fantasy epic starring a princess who's going to confront a demon and who has recruited a wizard. And then from the point of view of the wizard, it's a book about a post technological planet where he's been sent as an anthropologist to study the kind of uh, human civilization that that has followed on from the original colonization um there is no such thing as magic there are no demons uh and he is not in any circumstances a wizard and really shouldn't be going along with a princess uh on some sort of quest apparently and it's the so it is simultaneously a fantasy novel and a and a science fiction novel and there is one sec uh, uh one section in the middle where you just get the two two kind of narratives side by side as to what one looks like from the other um and yes it's it's a lot of fun it's also an exploration of um mental health because the uh naya the, the anthropologist slash wizard character has a a long-term relationship with kind of chronic depression um and has various sort of technological fixes for that which don't necessarily work terribly well and so and you know depression is a thing depression is something i, I suffer from myself so i thought it's because it's the thing that people often deal with in silence it's probably not a bad thing to have in a book that's just sort of out there um and yeah it it it, it you can never it, it goes to show you can never really tell what's going to hit the mark but that elder race um was one of those books that just did really really far far better than i anticipated